Imagine putting six of the most trusted synthetic oils through nearly a decade's worth of abuse. Real miles, real heat, real cold, and real engine stress. Not lab benches, not five-minute wear rigs. I'm talking about 200,000 miles of actual driving. Hard accelerations at 3 a.m., long idles in 110-degree summers, cold starts in winter that sound like the engine is begging for mercy, towing loads the engine was never built for, highway poles, stop-and-go torture, everything. By the end, only one oil came out looking like it could go another 200,000 miles. One turned into glue. One lost viscosity so badly it might as well have been water. One scored the cam lows before the test even got halfway. And the brand that's recommended everywhere online, the one mechanics swear by, produced some of the highest wear metals in the entire test. And here's the part that'll shock almost everyone watching. Three of these oils are top rated on Amazon, praised in forums, and marketed as premium synthetics. Yet they nearly destroyed the engine. Stay with me because I'm naming the oils, showing the results, and revealing the one brand that protected the engine like nothing else. It's not the one with the biggest commercial. It's not the one people brag about using. In fact, the winner is the one almost nobody talks about. Let's start from the beginning. We took a single 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, brand new filters for every cycle, six full synthetic oils, Mobile One Extended Performance, Valvoline Advanced Full Synthetic, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, Castrol Edge, Amsoil Signature Series, and Liquimoli. Each oil ran a full 33,000 mile interval. No early changes, no shortcuts. Every 5,000 miles, we sent samples to Blackstone Labs. After each interval, we tore down the engine. Bearings, rings, chain guides, cam lobes, oil control rings, varnish, sludge, every square inch. This wasn't sponsored. No freebies, no brand involvement, and no marketing influence. A retired Toyota powertrain engineer oversaw the teardown and graded the engine exactly as he would back when he worked for the manufacturer. Something he said during the process stuck with me. After 150,000 miles, oil brand doesn't just matter, it decides the engine's fate. He wasn't joking. Cold starts are where engines die. Up to 70% of wear happens before your temperature gauge even rises. That's where the first surprises appeared. Two oils kept a strong, stable film and low metals even on cold start torture cycles. Two held up okay, and two, both very popular, collapsed under basic winter conditions. Film strength failed. Iron spiked. One showed more wear in 32 degree starts than it should have shown in months of driving. The audience always asks, how is that possible? It's a top brand. Because marketing doesn't protect engines, chemistry does. Then came the high temperature phase, a simulated hell cycle of 240 to 260 degrees. Highway blasts at 85 miles per hour, long hill climbs and hard pulls in heat that would make most oils evaporate out of the crankcase. Two oils barely budged. Viscosity loss was microscopic, no oxidation, no sludge, nothing. Two did fine, but not elite. The other two? Oxidation skyrocketed. Varnish appeared. One turned noticeably thicker mid-cycle, which is the kind of thing that destroys timing chains and turbos. When we pulled the valve covers after each 33,000-mile run, the ranking was obvious. One brand was so clean that the metal looked vapor-blasted. No staining, no film, no sludge. Just clean aluminum and steel. Another was nearly as perfect. A third was good, but not flawless. Then things went downhill. Light varnish, then moderate varnish, then sludge, sticky deposits, and dark amber stains that screamed overheated oil. You know that moment when a mechanic pulls a valve cover and pauses? That happened, more than once. After the final 200,000 mile teardown, the results stopped being surprising and became undeniable. Timing chain wear? Two oils kept it nearly factory fresh. One showed mild stretch, two showed measurable deterioration, one showed burn marks on the chain guides, early failure territory. Piston rings? One brand kept them clean, mobile, and razor sharp even after 33,000 mile intervals. Only two oils did well, two were acceptable, and two produced carbon packed, sticky oil control rings you can diagnose from across the shop. Cam lobes? One oil left them mirror polished after 200,000 miles. Another nearly identical. Two had mild discoloration, one had light scoring, and one had deposits so thick that the Toyota engineer put his tools down and said, half laughing, half disgusted, this is what happens when advertising beats chemistry. By the time we checked the turbo feed passage, one of the first places weak oil exposes itself, the top tier oils were spotless. 
The worst one? Restricted by nearly 20%, enough to cook a turbocharger in real-world driving. Here's the ranking from worst to best. Last place, Castrol Edge, high wear metals, heavy oxidation, poor deposit control, and the most buildup. Great commercials, not great longevity. Fifth, Mobile One Extended Performance. Wear higher than expected, varnish on cam lobes, viscosity loss too early, decent but not what people think it is. Fourth, Valvanine Advanced, good daily driver oil, clean enough, stable enough, not engineered for abuse or long intervals. Third, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, very clean thanks to GTL base stocks, great for modern turbo GDI engines, but weaker at long idle and the antioxidant package struggle at high temperatures. Second place, Amsoil Signature, a leap high temperature stability, almost no sledge, low wear, and one of the best long interval oils on earth. Pricey, but chemical perfection. But number one, by a mile, was Liquimoly. Cleanest internals, lowest wear metals, no varnish, no sludge, strongest film strength, best cold starts, best high heat performance, best turbo protection, lowest timing chain wear, lowest ring deposits. When we opened the engine after its Liquimoly cycle, the engineer said something I'll never forget. This engine doesn't look like it has 200,000 miles. It looks more like 40. How did Amsoil and Liquimoly dominate? Base oil quality, PAO and ester chemistry, high ZDDP, but still catalyst safe, low volatility, additive packages designed for pressure and heat, not shelf appeal. What does this mean for you? If you want your engine to last, stop choosing oil based on commercials, convenience, or what's cheapest at a gas station. Engines don't care about brand loyalty. They care about chemistry. Use strong base oils. Use real anti-wear additives. Don't cheap out on filters. Don't push long intervals unless you're using oils engineered for it. If you want the absolute best protection, Liquimoly. For high heat, towing, long intervals, Amsoil Signature. For turbo GDI engines, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. For budget daily use, Thalvaline Advanced. Avoid long interval use of Tastrol and Mobile One if you care about high mile longevity. Two bottles of oil can look identical on a store shelf, but inside your engine, they behave like completely different substances. If you want a 200,000, 300,000, even 400,000 mile engine, don't choose marketing, choose chemistry. Choose the oil that survived this test, not the one with the biggest billboards. If this taught you something new, hit like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments, what oil are you running now? And are you switching after seeing these results?